everybody yeah yeah hey in tesla yeah yeah everybody rock your body right oh what's going on everybody urgent warning to tesla investors so not the haters but the investors shout outs to the big homie the one and only better than all the cronies and the fakes but the late great solving the money problem we're gonna get into this video shout outs to him fair use but come on man tesla must climb mount everest to win shareholders vote come on man y'all guys gotta stop being a re-nigger and give the money back that you said you was gonna pay elon have you voted yet this on the financial times tesla bust climb mount everest to win shareholder vote chair warns robert denholm outlines stakes for car maker who by the way definitely are not also an ai company and says the idea she is too close to elon musk is crap tesla's chair has said the car maker needs to climb quote mount everest as it faces shareholder votes on relocating to texas and elon musk's 56 billion dollar pay deal while dismissing criticism she is too close to the billionaire as quote crap robin denholm an australian accountant who has chaired tesla since 2018 is battling to win over shareholders ahead of an annual meeting on June 13 that amounts to a referendum on the mercurial leadership of the world's third richest person. Tesla's board is trying to prove that investors support a controversial pay deal that a Delaware court struck down in January. In the aftermath of the extremely corrupt ruling, the anti-democratic ruling, Musk vowed to leave the state and move Tesla's incorporation to Texas. Quote, we're very early days of the campaign and we will be meeting with shareholders all the way through to the day of the vote, then Holm told Financial Times at the end of a two-week investor roadshow in the US. Quote, the vote's pretty important for us as a company, but I also think it's important for corporate America as well. And by the way, she's absolutely right. I don't need to explain. Yeah, she's dumb right about that. This is a big deal for corporate America. This is for retail investors, guys. The old days... Most investors were coming from institutional, big money men, the Illuminati, all these people that you out here always say and complain about, lobbyists, corporation, blah, 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 blah. That's who used to rule the day when it came to investing. But retail investors, it's a new thing. We have the technology, the smartphone guys, and we have Robin Hood. We have Charles Schwab. These applications have allowed us to just like click a couple buttons and get access to the same shares and the same purchasing power, or at least the ability to take all of our money, the trillions of dollars that we have available to us and invest it in the market. And so this is big. This is monumental for us as shareholders. We got to make sure that we stay capitalist. Come on, guys. To explain why do I? I do. This was an eat what you kill compensation plan. Musk was only to receive any compensation if he produced extraordinary results for the company and brought extraordinary value to shareholders. No extraordinary results. No extraordinary increase in the value of the investment for shareholders. No compensation whatsoever. Most CEOs in the United States and elsewhere are paid regardless of performance. Some, in addition, may get a bonus if their performance doesn't suck shit. Many CEOs in the United States get paid tens of millions of dollars a year, even if they destroy their companies. And for this corrupt activist posing as a judge, Kathleen McSeebom, to spit in the face of investors, and democracy, remember investors overwhelmingly voted in support of this pay package, and to rob Musk of fairly earned compensation, if this isn't overturned, this is a dangerous moment for corporate America. And for corporate America, and I agree, 150%. It's a very dangerous time for corporate America if this is not overturned. But he did make a great point when most of you normies constantly in NPCs always argue the point that, man, this guy, he just got a helicopter. He just got big money and he he, he spends it. And he, he He's on an island and he bought an island and he did this with his money. And the richest person did that with their money. And that's not right. What about our fair share? Now, here you have a CEO one of the richest men out here sleeping in the factory, out here working very hard, outperforming, not getting paid any salary, any money, unless he meets those metrics, those milestones, those goals. If you don't meet the goals, you get no gold. 
That's what we established. And because of an activist disguised as a judge comes the sides that it wasn't good enough. And the richest man in earth, he's been slighted. Boo hoo comes with all of her extracurricular activities and decides to strike it and reject it. We have to deal with this vote. And now it's up to the shareholders, institutional and retail alike, to see what happens when the shoe is on the other foot. They always complain about the rich being evil and not keeping their word and taking jobs out of America. Now here stands a CEO, which brings jobs to America. <clears throat> Fremont Factory, better than Toyota, where Toyota failed. <clears throat> bringing jobs to Austin called the Giga Factory. You're welcome, Americans in Texas. <clears throat> then created another factory out in Nevada with it plans to expand. <clears throat> also New York, we have facilities and factories. <clears throat> also in California, we just created a new battery facility, integrated our products from the Ruta to the Tuda. <clears throat> just broke ground down in Texas to build a new lithium ion refinery. Talk about insourcing. Talk about bringing jobs, industries, refineries, factories back to America. There is no other company doing it better, greater than Tesla. Not Apple, not Amazon, not Facebook, fake book, not Google, none of that is bringing the jobs back. And this is how we treat the CEOs who ride or die with us. Let me get off my high horse and let this guy continue to cook. We have some other things to talk about. For America. Now on screen, some very important context. This is how large Tesla shareholders, e.g. Vanguard, BlackRock, and so on, voted back in 2018 on mass compensation. So these are not votes to ratify this, which was already approved. Over 70% of shareholders voting in favor back in 2018. But note, the biggest outside shareholder of all, Vanguard, back in 2018, voted against Musk's compensation. At the time, Vanguard owned over 7% of Tesla. So if Vanguard were to vote the same way again, 7% of the total votes against. Now keep in mind, shareholders who don't vote on Musk's pay specifically, those shares don't count, meaning if Vanguard were to vote no again and currently owns, let's just call it 7% of Tesla, but let's say 20% of shareholders don't vote on this matter, guess what? Their vote counts for more than 7%, understand right? BlackRock, holding less than 6% in 2018, voted yes. The next handful, State Street, Geode, Capital Group, Nordjus Bank, no, 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 and no. This is an enormously important moment. And this is what Robin is currently doing on her Investor Tour is talking to these large shareholders. Hey, guys, here's why it probably makes sense for you to vote. Yes, by the way, I don't want to get started on how unfair and corrupt. How did I manifest my dream husband in just two weeks? I used really? a certain set of manifestations. Really? Come on, bro. We Man, don't make me comment on that. Shorty done said, well, hold on. Stop the show. I'm going to manifest this shareholders. I'm going to manifest for Elon in favor for his package and the relocation to Texas. Hold on. Give me a second, guys. I got to meditate. I got to be on her joint. Man, how she, she done meditated and, and got a husband. I'm going to meditate and get this vote in Elon's favor. Like, that's what I'm on. Hold on. How we do that, though? How I do that? I need to bring in some music in order to get that done because that's exclusive. I don't even know how we get that done. Hold on. Let's do this one. That that's we gotta breathe first. We gotta take our time with breathing. We gotta breathe in, breathe out. That's how we do it. Shout outs to her for giving us their tips. Hopefully I can manifest some shares out here, manifest a, a change in the game. Let's go. This decision was how ridiculous, how anti-democratic, how anti-capitalist, how anti-performance-based compensation it is, how fucked up it is. I think I've made my thoughts clear. Putting that all to the side.
Excuse my internet. It's obviously going super slow today. It seems like, quite clear to me that if Musk is robbed of this fairly earned compensation and the vultures who brought this case on behalf of a supposed Tesla shareholder with like 0.0000000000000000 ownership of the company, roughly, who requested in excess of $5 billion in fees, by the way, not in cash, but in Tesla stock. What the fuck? If this compensation isn't ratified, what are the odds that this harms Tesla, the company, and importantly, Tesla stock? I'd say the odds are extremely high. And if that's the case, putting aside all the bullshit about how unreasonable and unfair it was to rob the guy of compensation he earned for doing extraordinary things, as a current shareholder of Tesla stock, in my opinion, you would have to be brain dead not to realize the negative effect failure to ratify this 2018 compensation would have on the stock, aka your investment. So the question would be, why would somebody voluntarily want to shoot themselves in the foot? Now, obviously, the actual answers to that question are, A, they have sand in their vagina. Elon said something that offended them and they just want to hurt the guy, an eye for an eye, fuck that guy. He made my feelings hurt and my butt hurt and therefore fuck him. Or possibly while being long Tesla stock, you also may be betting against the company via some short-term puts, in which case you'd be as loud as you possibly could about how you're voting no and everyone else should vote no and how Elon bad. In short, there is no rational reason why anyone yeah you got to be mindful of that too economic warfare people are out here trying to short the stock be a little amc type people game stop like they ain't got no life so all they do is short stocks and play little reindeer games and so they're going to be out here creating toy soldiers and fake ghost account and saying i'm voting no but got no shares but they're just going to try to fuel that in order to short the stock and make some gains so we got people out there that are doing that and i don't see a logical reason i do see emotional reason why you would vote against and i'm not surprised or gonna put it past these emotional nancy's anyone who owns tesla stock today wouldn't support the ratification of this pay package yet there's a very very strong probability that many people who currently do own tesla stock will vote against this in fact some of them have also Explain to the world exactly how many buckets of sand are currently in their vagina by telling everyone, hey, I am voting no, and here's how many shares I own. Wankers. So the point, there are a lot of butthurt babies right now who are willing to shoot themselves in the foot. I'd be surprised if many of these large Tesla shareholders, Vanguard and the likes, would vote no this time around. Surely they can't be that dumb. However, there is a potential curveball, and that is if the desire to virtue signal trumps the desire to protect their investment in Tesla. There's enough activists putting pressure on some of these big shareholders. Even bad text and rich visit. Then you never know how they'll vote. I do hope everyone watching has. I do believe in that activism right there. Shoot, people more commies than actually capitalists exercised their right to have a say. The pay deal struck down in Delaware would have boosted Musk's ownership from just under thirteen percent to more than twenty percent. He has threatened to develop future artificial intelligence products outside Tesla if he does not increase his stake. Not sure threatened is the word, but hey, let's not get bogged down in semantics. Check this out. Hey, look, the man's a grown man. He can do what he wants. A Tesla timeline, Tesla's market capitalization. At the beginning of this timeline, this is when the board proposed the original pay package for Musk. Now, look at where the stock was when they proposed the pay package. Now, let's fast forward. Well, in case you guys didn't see that, you know, because some of you guys got messed up eyes or whatever. But that's where it was almost down to zero <laughs> but that's when they appro approved the pay package and look at where is that now right when a judge alleged judge we still in debate about if that person's a judge struck down the actual pay package all right now let's fast forward and talk about what people thought at that time right people were probably supportive right they wanted to see elon do great they wanted to give him goals to accomplish Allow me to remind you, folks, right? folks, what people actually said at the time. Somebody reposting this clip from CNBS discussing the lack of fatigue in the afternoon. Allow me to remind you, folks, what people actually said at the time. Somebody reposting this clip from CNBS discussing the compensation. And the man in the video, at least one of them, Andrew Ross Sorkin of CNBS, quoted this and said, I remember this morning well. He continues, the truth is, I thought the compensation plan was the most, quote, skin in the game in history. I still do. I've criticized CEO compensation a lot, but not this package. Without the incentives, 
Elon Musk could have easily stepped down as CEO. And then where would Tesla have been? Admittedly, I was skeptical he'd hit the most ambitious targets of the package, but he did, having put his entire compensation at risk. Isn't that what we want when we say pay for performance? So now let's watch the clip that Andrew Sorkin was referring to. January. Heck no, you know we are about inclusion just because you exist. 23, 2018, as James Stevenson points out, with Tesla's market cap at the time, $59 billion. Today, as I record this, roughly 10 times that amount. It is some breaking news this morning uh, that just broke uh, literally overnight. Elon Musk, he's the subject of the column, uh, telling me he's now agreed to stay on as CEO of Tesla for the next decade. There's been a lot of speculation uh, that he'd be stepping down in the next two or three years. He had said that once the completion of the Model S, uh, or the Model 3 rather, uh, was up and running, that he might not stay uh, at the company, at least as the CEO. But Tesla now announcing a radical new compensation plan. It could be perhaps the most radical compensation plan uh, in history. Uh, com Musk's compensation is going to be tied directly to the company's performance. Uh, the executive will receive no guaranteed compensation of any time, of any kind at all. He gets no salary, cash bonus, equity. Uh, he only gets equity that, that vests over time, but only if he reaches uh, these hurdle rates, which are, dare I say, crazy. So right now the company is worth $59 billion. Mm -hmm. They run at $50 billion increments. So if he gets the company to $100 billion. Wait, you're just talking market capitalization, not mark based on revenue, not so there, based so on there, the number be, of there's gonna be, production. There's going to be two metrics at each step. So the first step is he has to get the company to $100 billion mm -hmm. and reach these operational and adjusted EBITDA and revenue number. If he doesn't get either of them, he gets She was ready to hate you, bro. She was, you mean he ain't got to increase the revenue? You mean all he going to do is manipulate? Like, first of all, you're in the news. Like, read, lady. What the hell? Are you not a part of this? Like, you're not up to date. You sound like a normie just listening in. Like, come on. And then number two, calm on the calm down, lady. Okay. Care. Like, we got it. It's a part of it. There's a couple of metrics. Allow me to explain. He gets nothing. That's kind if of a he, weird way to he, break it down based on market If he gets to 150 and has to hit the operational numbers. But, I mean, the market can be irrational. At so each 50, you can't control that. At each 50 billion. What? She, he, see, and she's not even listening because he said there's operational pieces within it, revenue and et cetera. And she's like, well, <laughs> it doesn't matter. The market's irrational. Just a normie wanting to regurgitate something, wanting to make an argument. And once again, I think when it comes down to the mainstream media, man, we are the mainstream media out here. It's obstacles to opportunity. It's everyone hates Tesla. It's solving the money problem. It's daily Tesla when it was around. And everyone else out there that's doing the news coverage because we're going through the details. We're actually listening. Billion dollar number. He collects 1% of the company. If somehow, magically, he would get the company to $650 billion, which is literally what the plan calls for, if you can believe this, uh, he would collect the equivalent of about $55 what if billion gets, dollars in compensation. Otherwise, he gets absolutely Okay, nothing. what if you get it to $650 Zero. billion dollars and then it immediately... So I've got to interrupt here. I just... I, fuck me, dude. Becky here immediately had a 404 error. As soon as she heard anything to do with market capitalization, her brain then immediately switched off. Her ability to process language was completely offline, and she didn't fucking listen. She just got fixated on market cap. What? Now, Andrew was quite clear. As soon as she hears market cap, she jumps in, oh, what if it... Andrew's like, there are also operational milestones in terms of earnings and revenue growth that are also required. Becky didn't hear that because she was 404 airing, oh, but market cap, market cap, market. Just to be clear for anyone who is unaware, quote, for each tranche, all 12 of these, dual trigger vesting requires both one additional market cap milestone in blue, and keyword, and one more time, and one additional operational milestone, either increase in revenue or adjusted EBITDA. Becky, again, during her 404 era, could only see blue. <laughs> this is the perfect structure for a compensation plan because it ensures that underlying metrics to justify an increase in market cap are also... Guys, this is real. This is real. She's probably college educated and she's not the only one. It's people do this. That's why humans are not rational. They're not logical. They're not super smart. They have selective hearing when their emotions get control or they have selective hearing because they want to. Whatever the case is, whatever the cause. It's clear. There's a picture here. 
and animal crackers. There's pictures, animal crackers, words, numbers, <laughs> all helping you to make a decision. If you can't see the numbers, there's a picture. If you can't see the picture or the numbers, there's words. All of it is there to show you that there are other metrics to this compensation plan, but brain shut off, market cap only, allow me to actually make an argument in favor of market cap when there's no reason to because there's operational metrics also. Also, MET, the adjusted EBITDA milestones, for example, required approximately a 10 times increase for the final to be hit. And revenue, close to a 10 times increase. And market cap, also roughly a 10 times increase. In order for us to get anything, not only did revenue and or adjusted EBITDA, as in earnings, need to increase massively, but so too market cap, meaning underlying metrics had to surge as well as the value of the company. Therefore, everyone wins. And poor Becky, immediately 404 error. She just couldn't listen, couldn't hear, didn't listen, didn't want to hear. Oh, market cap, market cap, market cap, market cap. Oh, oh. It's kind of embarrassing because, I mean, Andrew did explain quite clearly and Becky just so fixated on that she couldn't listen. This just goes to show, by the way, how unique a plan this was. But her brain immediately switched off when hearing about it. Back to the clip. So okay, what if you get it to $650 Zero. billion dollars and then it immediately collapses to $500 billion? Is it just hitting that market capitalization milestone that matters? Or is it keeping it there for a certain time? Is it hitting so it? So here's where it gets day? even more interesting. The shares vest... Uh, but then he has to hold the shares for five years e for e at each rate. But you point. still get it, right? If the if, even if uh, market capitalization is the weirdest thing I've no, ever no, no, heard. No, 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 no. You can't. It's impossible to game because you, even if you were to get the company in the market cap to hundred billion dollars, yeah. you then have to, by the way, hit the operational numbers on top of it. On top of it, it's a one. You have to get both, and then you have to hold the shares for five years. I mean, it's weird. so if so if so if you were trying to do something temporary to try to, to try and get the stock price you up, can't, you can't know, because well, you five years later shares. your shares will yeah. be worthless. It right. would affect decisions on buybacks and issuing right. stock and stuff. floats and, and all kinds. It's, market cap is just a bizarre. So thing. interestingly, the last man, I I I I I can't even like. What are we still about? I don't want to hear him solving the money problem. Goes in on her. He's going to do that damage, man. What? This is ridiculous. But these are the people who are put in front of you, presented in front of you as if they know what they're talking about. And you're listening to them, drinking a cup of coffee, deciding the future of your finances based on, I don't even know if it's cold there. Why are they wearing jackets? But net, net, why are they outside? But net, net, maybe that might be the part of the reason. But the reality of the fact is he then said everything and she's just so fixated on market cap. And so therefore... The people who are listening don't hear the rest. And so even back then, people had issues from Becky to other people who just don't like capitalism, right? And they want to live in a communist country. I say, go to China. It's waiting for you. Everything. Everyone loves China. Everyone hates Tesla, I guess. Shout outs to Tesla in the vote that's coming up. If you own shares, get skin in the game. This is the fight. This is the duel against an activist judge, alleged judge, and the people. <laughs> me already voted, you feel me? And if it don't work in my favor, then everybody is going to have to catch mayhem. I'm coming through. And I'm not playing any games. I already voted. And if you guys don't know, now you know I voted for, for the compensation package. And I voted for moving it down to Texas. Texas. T for Tesla and T for Texas. A real American dream. A state that supports the greats and gets rid of all the fakes that like to hate. No need to contemplate. Why wait when you can take? Elon is great, unlike these fakes, these whacks who want to focus on the stats. They not focus on the market cap, but also the operational performance. A rare unicorn. He likes to transform and build something that the haters love to mourn. Smart intellectual people adore. Follow up, pull up, show up to the vote. Damn Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Damn Joe Biden and Trump. This is the real 
clash of the titans, the writing for the future of capitalism. USA all day, just like Elon. Everyone loves to hate Tesla, but guess what? God bless you.